Hi Felters and welcome, my name is Philippa. In today's video I am going to talk about all the things I wish I'd known before I started needle felting. Now I have lots of little nuggets of information that I'm going to whiz through and they will definitely help you on your needle felting journey. Let's get started. <laughs> First off, and I'm not going to number them because there's too many, it's much easier to start with carded wool than it is to start with tops. And I really go on and on and on about this all the time. This is the difference between carded wool and tops really quickly. This is carded wool on the left, this is tops. Tops looks a bit like hair. Big difference between them. So I have a beginner playlist and I will link that at the end and there are loads of videos in there to do with wools, needles, armature, everything you need, how to get a smooth finish, how to use heat on your items. So I will link that at the end because most of the things I talk about here I've covered in a video. Always use good quality needles. There are tons of really good providers out there. Heidi Feathers is number one for me. Gross Beckert is another German make and they are very, very good needles. But if you haven't got those, go to a dedicated needle felting shop. We've got a long list here. Heidi Feathers, Serafina Fiber, Living Felt, Claire's Crafts Creates, Adelaide Walker, Sue's Country Creations. There's loads. Make sure the shop is dedicated to needle felting and the needles should be good quality. Good quality needles will really make a difference to your felting, I promise you. Practice, practice, practice. Finish your felt, move on, do the next one. You will always improve with each felt. No two felts come out the same. If you're trying to copy what someone else has done, it's very, very difficult. Do not worry if your felted item looks different to the one that you were trying to copy. That's completely normal. These three are different in size, but their noses are different, their horns are different, the direction their head's looking is different. If it goes wrong with needle felting, it's not a problem. Do not worry. You can pull bits off, you can add bits on, you can even use scissors on your needle felted items. Or just move on and go on to the next needle felted creation that you want to do. Learn about wool before you order it. Go and look at as many videos as you can going through wool, different wool types, um, the names, terminology, some names are different in America as they are to the UK. Um, it's very hard to tell what wool you're ordering when you're ordering online. It's so much nicer if you can go into a shop and see it. Order small, see if the shop does samples, that really, really helps. But unfortunately, you do end up ordering quite a bit of wool. Just be prepared for that. I have an awful lot of wool now over the years. Let me show you some of my stuff. This bag is full up of wool, this bag is full up of wool yarn, this bag here is full up of uh, wool, I've got core wool under here, I've got wool all in the bottom half of this shelving, I've got wool on the back door and I've even got wool in the garage as well. Try and be prepared for it and just work out how you're going to store your wool or try and limit the amount of stuff you buy in the first place, that would really help. Do use core wool on the inside of your projects to try and save you money. I have a video on core wool and what different types there are. Some core wools felt faster than others, so that really helps you with your project. But core wool will save you money. Do roll your wool nice and tight at the beginning of a project. Um, some people tie knots in their wool and it all speeds up the felting process, which is really, really good. So make sure you keep that wool rolled nice and tight. Whatever, if you're doing legs and wrapping legs, keep it nice and tight. If you're doing the start of a ball, make sure that's nice and tight. Um, yeah, just one point. It can be quite addictive. Um, it's a repetitive motion. You can literally lose hours just sitting there and it's a lovely feeling it's a bit like a meditation in a way so just to let you know it can be really addictive in a good way this one is something that helps me is make sure you felt something you really like or you really want to do because um, needle felting takes time and patience and you want to create something that you really like at the end of it you don't want to be felting an animal that you didn't want to make make sure you really like what you're felting. Choose an animal you do like and then try and felt that animal. Alongside with that, it really, really helps if you use a kit or an online course to help improve your felting. If you are guided by somebody, it, it really, really helps. Along with that, in-person courses are fantastic. I know it's not always going to be possible for most people. I'm just going to show you. I went on a course with Joe Gard Gardiner Art 
and there were six ladies on the course and I have been felting for at least four years at that point and I just wanted to go because I really like Joe Gardner Art's work and I wanted to learn from her and so I went and probably about three of the other ladies there hadn't done much needle felting before at all and because we were led by Joe so well with the correct tuition the correct walls the correct needles let me just show you all of our felts and see if you can tell which one's mine I think this is fascinating can you tell mine is the one on the far left the smallest one it's hard to tell isn't it exactly so if as a beginner if you get the correct help early on you can really smash it and do really well with this needle felting and alongside that it comes into it doesn't take that long to get that good at felting um we've got several felters like curly joe creation her work is amazing and i think she started 2018 2019 so literally three and a half years ago and her stuff is astonishing so it doesn't take that long to get that good where you compare it to like if you were painting it might take you 10 years to get really good at what you're doing needle felting if you get into it and get the right help early on you can do well this is a sheep i created in 2019 and then a year later, this is a sheep I created. So you can see, and there's a couple more, all a year later, no more. So you can see the advancements there. Do get into wire armature. Don't be scared of it and do give it a go. Um, look at lots of videos. I have lots of videos on wire armature. It really helps, especially if you're doing an animal with legs or a person, you want them standing up. It really gives stability to your felting. Do not be scared of it and definitely use a pipe cleaner to wrap it around the wire to stop the wool slipping. That's just a simple, um, easy help solution. So do try wire armature. Do not put it off and put it off. It's really worth getting into it. All these creations have got wire armature bases and it really helps them all stand up. Try something simple like just doing horns. With regards to needles, I did mention get good quality needles. Alongside that, we have to say that needles are coloured specific to each company. That is not a universal code. So when you order from that company, try and keep the code that they have for those needles and keep those needles separate. The colours are not universal, which a lot of people ask. And alongside that as well, I keep saying, there's so many little points I've got, is um, there are no silly or stupid questions in needle felting just ask away there's so many facebook groups you can ask me there's loads of people you can ask for help it's not a silly question at all and there's no right or wrong way to needle felt there's different ways that people like to felt their items some people like their items soft and fluffy some people like their items hard and with no fluff it's not right it's not wrong it's your style of felting and when you start felting an item it will take on a character that you develop so there's no right or wrong way of doing it there are ways to make it easier for you and if you're going to sell your items i would definitely try and make them firmer because then they'll last longer for people if you're to sell them but it's up to you how firm or hard you want your item felted multi-needle tools do speed up your work but you have to have the right needles in them, which are the finer needles. Otherwise, they don't really work that well. And I have a whole video on that. Um, not everybody likes the same needles. Some people like star needles. Some people like spiral. Some people like triangular needles. So when you're watching a video and they go, this is amazing, this needle, it's because they like it. I don't like star needles. I like spirals. But to be honest, a 40 triangular and a 38 triangular, you could do pretty much everything with needle felting. You would be absolutely fine. I do recommend trying the other needles. If you stab with quite a lot of force, a star needle will work really well for you. And it, it's a workhorse, people say, but it doesn't work for me. So that leads us on to you do not have to stab the wool really hard. You do not have to go at it. Um, gentle stabs work really well it's in the beginning yes you want to get the core nice and together so you might do bigger stabs but as you move along it's nice and soft and gentle stabs and that's where it becomes fun and and you just really get into it um if you're not stabbing as hard you're less likely to hurt yourself which is a bonus because you will stab yourself in the beginning as a beginner you will break needles it's quite normal but it doesn't actually hurt that much especially if you're stabbing gentle and alongside that 
don't watch TV and needle felt because you need to concentrate on what you're doing. You need to look down at what you're doing. Um, so do pay attention to what you're doing with that needle and where your fingers are. It's a lot easier than knitting or crocheting or sewing because there's no counting, there's no measuring, there's no... It, it's it's great because you don't have to be artistic. I am a rubbish at drawing or painting or anything like that. I can knit, I can do a tiny bit of crochet. But it's got a freedom where you don't worry about numbers or it's it's a way of sculpting but not getting messy with clay. Um, so it, it's interesting. You don't have to be artistic, especially if you follow uh, what someone's done before or how they've made it. Um, it will really, really help you. But yeah, it's a lot easier than the concentration you have to put into knitting or crocheting where you have to count and make sure you don't drop a stitch and things like that. And alongside with that, you can correct mistakes really easily. Whereas with knitting and crocheting, you have to sort of, it's a bit difficult. But so yeah, it's really, really good from that point of view. If you're going to attach an item, say a leg or an ear, leave the end of it fluffy. It really, really helps. Do not finish the end of a leg and leave it flat and smooth. Leave it all fluffy and that helps attach it. You'll learn that quite early on, so that, sh that should help you. Most items you felt will stick to your mat, especially when you're making something flat like is. It doesn't matter what mat you have. So the way I get around this is I'm constantly peeling it off gently and supporting it, turning it over, peeling it off, turning it over regularly and shallow stabs. So not stabbing as much. And uh, when you're finishing an item, stabbing at 45 degrees, um, helps you not stab down and stab the item into the mat so much. So 45 degrees works really, really well. And lastly, I just want to say, enjoy the process. Don't be worried about whether you're doing it right, whether you've got it smooth enough. Just have a bit of fun and enjoy what you're doing. And it's, it's relaxing. Um, creativity is one of the basic yearnings of human beings to be creative it really really is and it's very satisfying so just enjoy what you are doing so that is most of the nuggets of information I can think of do you have any are you a needle felter are you watching and you thinking geez I wish someone had just said that to me at the beginning and it would have really really helped put it in the comments below um, I have a beginner playlist here, which has got all of the videos. I also have a technical playlist, which goes into things in a bit more detail. But click on those and I'll meet you over there. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe because I have lots of free tutorials. And take care and we'll see you again soon.